time. What is going on, Headliner Nation, Jake, Fantasy Headliners? Hopefully everyone's doing well out there today. Welcome to Week 18 Fantasy Football. We're talking about quarterbacks and who should we trust and not trust here this week in the last week of the NFL season. Now, I've already done my running back video. I prefaced that video by saying we all understand exactly what happened this past week, and we are not going to act like it's just something that is no big deal. Uh, the injuries to DeMar Hamlin are a huge deal. It's bigger than football. It's bigger than fantasy football. And the last thing I want in this community is people to spread any type of negativity because of the outcomes of their fantasy football games because there's a young man who's fighting for his life in a hospital right now. We're not going to tolerate any of that type of negativity or toxicity on this channel or in this comment section. I think we're all adult enough to where we can come up with some great ideas to maybe settle what is a very unfortunate situation when it comes to our fantasy football leagues i'm not going to sit here and tell everybody what to do you got to talk to each other right you got to get with your league mates you got to come up with a way to settle it a mature way to settle it because remember this is still a game meant to be fun it's not life and death right so you know uh, thoughts and prayers going out to demar hamlin i uh, said that on monday night i was on the road when uh, when i heard the news it it gets to a lot of us, right? I mean, I'm a player first type of guy. And when I see things like that, it does, it affects us. It's why we didn't have any videos on Tuesday either. As me and Kyle got together and was like, listen, let's just take a day. We don't need to be rushing out fantasy football content because right now that's not what's most important in life. So we delayed everything a day. We're here, we're talking quarterbacks. We're gonna switch the format up a little bit. Did the same thing uh, in my running back video. Kyle's doing it for his uh, wide receivers and tight ends. Kind of hard to just do clear start sits. In week 18 of the NFL season, especially when it comes to fantasy football you're just trying to find guys that have something to play for if they have something to play for they're more likely to go out there and have a higher ceiling game than maybe a floor game if they're playing in something meaningless so what i did here was this i took all the players who had something to play for and i highlighted them green i then took all the guys who had nothing to play for highlighted them yellow and i took guys that i was not interested in regardless and i highlighted them in red i then went through each player's matchup in individual numbers and kind of made some changes based off that if there were some guys that were in the green that i felt should be a little bit more risky i'll drop them down to yellow and vice versa from yellow to green and this is what we've come up with here for week 18 let's go ahead and throw them up on the screen remember these are not rankings these are not rankings these are not rankings right the rankings will come out later in the week this is just clumped up sessions i guess you can kind of consider them like tiers for quarterbacks so we'll start off here at the top it's patrick mahomes he has a game in which he still has to win they're fighting for that number one overall seed in the afc and home field advantage going up against the las vegas raiders on the road in las vegas Pretty good week to start Patrick Mahomes. Trevor Lawrence, we know they're fighting for that division this week in a matchup going up against Tennessee. So Trevor Lawrence is definitely going to be somebody who I feel more than confident in this week to go out there and fight for that playoff spot and put up some decent numbers. Josh Allen going up against New England, another team fighting for that number one overall seed. Obviously, they're going to have a lot going on in their head. I expect them to come out and play motivated football. Uh, Josh Allen, obviously, we're starting in fantasy football. We know that. Jalen Hurts, we're still unsure whether or not he actually played in this game because now Philadelphia kind of needs to win it to have a chance at that NFC number one overall spot going up against the Giants. If he doesn't, if it's Gardner Minshew, he'll probably be in the green section as well. But when the rankings come, maybe a little bit lower. Dak Prescott, another team out there fighting for a number one spot in the NFC going up against the Washington Commandos who have already been eliminated. I like Dak this week for multiple touchdowns. Once again, he continues to throw multiple touchdowns. Unfortunately, throwing a lot of interceptions with them, but the touchdowns are kind of helping. Justin Herbert has a matchup going up against Denver. Denver, nothing to play for. Justin Herbert and the Chargers have already come out and said, hey, we're playing our starters. Does that mean they're playing all four quarters? It doesn't. Now, the Chargers can improve their seed in the playoffs by one spot and move up to the number five seed. Does that mean they play all four quarters to really try to you know hammer at home? Maybe not. If there's a lead late in this ball game, maybe we see a little bit of rest for this team and some of their starters. But as of right now, in a game that they've already come out and said, hey, we want to win it. Justin Herbert's up here in green. Geno Smith, the Seahawks. We know that they need to continue to win this game to have a chance at the wild card playoffs. They're going up against the Rams, a team in which we've seen a little bit of struggles at time from Geno Smith. But overall, 
Pretty consistent football. Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers. They're playing Arizona. Great matchup for Brock Purdy to go out there and throw multiple touchdowns once again. And they need to try to win this game to have a chance at the number one overall seed and home field advantage as well. Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions. Now, they may be eliminated by the time this game actually kicks off Sunday night. But Dan Campbell has already come out and said, listen, we're playing this game to win regardless. Even if they can't get into the playoffs, They could keep Green Bay out, and that's probably something that's going to motivate them for sure. Uh, Aaron Rodgers in that matchup as well, something to play for, right? Green Bay needs to win that ball game. Definitely has something to play for. Aaron Rodgers up in that green section. Joe Burrow in the Bengals. Kind of unclear exactly how they fit into that number one overall seed scenario, but they're still playing for the AFC North Divisional title, so they need to win. And then Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going up against Atlanta. They've come out and said that Tom Brady is going to play in this ball game, but Tampa Bay has already clinched. They can't improve their situation. Now, Tom Brady has never really been sat last game of the season in his entire career, and they've already come out and said they don't expect to do it this year. He is verge green. If you mixed green and yellow, you have a really pale green looking color. That's kind of where Tom Brady is at right now. There's a little bit of risk with Tom Brady. How about we move down to the yellow guys? We'll start off with Teddy B, Teddy Bridgewater. Now, they're playing for a chance at the wild card. Remember, no Tua this week, but this is a tough matchup for Teddy B, not only just going against the Jets, he dislocated his pinky finger on his throwing hand last week, and there's a chance he may not play. There's some risk there, right? So that's definitely somebody we're paying closer attention to. We know in this offense they can put up huge numbers, but if he's limited at all with that injury... Dude going right down to the red here in a heartbeat. We're just paying close attention to the practice reports there. Kirk Cousins of the Minnesota Vikings going against Chicago. Not a bad matchup, but they already started resting starters last week. So you have to think that they're going to do that again here this week. Maybe we don't see the ceiling games from Kirk Cousins, even if he plays all four quarters. Mike White, another guy that as of right now, on paper, seems to be their starting quarterback going into 2023. I don't know if they really want to risk any major injury with him as well, being that he's already banged up. Sam Darnold going up against New Orleans in New Orleans. Been playing great here as of late. I need to give some credit to Sam Darnold and the way that this team is playing. It's another team that is eliminated. Nothing really to play for. Ceiling is a little bit lower. If you're in two quarterback leagues, though, I don't mind Sam Darnold whatsoever. His opponent, Andy Dalton, in that game. It's just the ups and downs of Andy Dalton. It's the injury to the wide receivers. It's Carolina playing pretty good football from time to time. So Andy Dalton going to be down here in the yellow, along with Deshaun Watson, who just had his best game last week since coming back. Now he's going up against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has something to play for. Pittsburgh needs to win this ball game. Not an opportunity for me to really risk it with Deshaun Watson. Daniel Jones and the Giants going up against Philadelphia. They've already clinched, has New York, right? They don't need to win this game to improve anything. They know where they're going to be. Daniel Jones becomes a little bit of an interesting topic here because there's a chance that maybe we don't see him for all four quarters. He's already a guy that's kind of up and down. There is some risk with Daniel Jones, but he will be closer to the top 12 overall guys just due to the potential ceiling and then Russell Wilson I know not a lot of people want to trust Russell Wilson right now they're eliminated do they really want to risk him for next year I mean maybe maybe they do maybe maybe that'd be a good excuse for them not to have to start him. whatever it may be Russell Wilson obviously has risk coming into this game aside from the fact that it's week 18 and then we go down to the red guys the red column guys that I'm really not considering this week now Jarrett Stidham came out last week and looked like an all pro quarterback now he's going up against Kansas City in a must win ball game If this was like the middle of the season, maybe we think about it, but not the time to get too cute. I'm not starting Jarrett Stidham. Josh Dobbs looked great last week for Tennessee. Now he's going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars on the road in Jacksonville for a spot in the playoffs. That's a lot of pressure for a guy in his second start. Mac Jones, not a ceiling high enough there to start him against Buffalo. Kenny Pickett starting to play real well. I've said for a long time that Kenny Pickett is somebody we're going to start considering in 2023, but the ceiling isn't quite there yet. The touchdowns, the passing touchdowns just aren't there consistently enough to make him a fantasy start. We've got Nathan Peterman now for the Chicago Bears. We thought it was going to be Justin Fields, but they really had no reason to trot that kid out in a game that did not matter. His season is over, and we're really not considering starting Nathan Peterman here this week. 
Tyler Huntley, it looks like, again, in Baltimore, no word officially on Lamar Jackson at the time of this recording. Going up against Cincinnati, a team who's very motivated to win. Tyler Huntley, we haven't seen him produce consistently for weeks now. How about the Washington quarterbacks? We thought it was going to be Carson Wentz. Now they're coming out and saying, hey, you're probably going to see some Taylor Heineke, and we're probably also going to see some Sam Howell, rookie quarterback out of North Carolina, who lit it up in the preseason. I'm on record as being a pretty big Sam Howell fan, not because he played at North Carolina, but just the fact that this guy was overly slept on during the draft. He produced great numbers in college, came back a final year after losing almost all of his weapons, was forced to really have to run the ball a lot more. This is a guy who's very mobile in the pocket and can still deliver the the deep ball. I'm paying close attention to Sam Howell this week. Uh, Baker Mayfield going up against Seattle, not starting Baker in week 18. David Blow for Arizona, if it's him, if it's Colt McCoy, I don't really care. They're not having any sort of consistent offense in Arizona. Davis Mills and the Houston Texans going up against Indianapolis, two teams with nothing to play for. Nick Foles, still not interested and Nick Foles, and then Desmond Ritter, another one of those guys that maybe we pay closer attention to in 2023, but not so much just yet. He's definitely a guy who's on the climb, though, right? We're seeing weekly improvements from Desmond Ritter, which is great to see in a young kid late in the season, somebody to definitely pay attention to in 2023, but I'm not starting him here in Week 18, the Fantasy Championships for so many People, But like I said, we have to approach this week a little bit differently. And the most important thing that you can possibly do in week 18 is try to find a way to start as many players that have something to play for. You're trying to shoot for that ceiling in week 18. So many guys that maybe you've relied upon all year long may not be so safe this week. Because of that, you got to find the guys with the ceiling to make up the difference. And that's kind of what we went with in this type of format this week. Hopefully I was able to give you a little bit of information to make your decisions a little bit easier rankings will be coming out here a little bit later in the week remember no thursday night football so we have a little bit of extra time and we're looking forward to it right there's a lot going on for a lot of people right now i just gotta make sure i I push once again we're staying positive in this community we're not going to turn into some type of toxic comment section because people are upset about the outcomes of their fantasy football leagues there is more to life my friends there's more to life out there and i'm all about hanging out with you guys as much as possible and really trying to enjoy each other's company each and every day hopefully you feel the same way if you do hit the like button down below consider subscribing if you haven't already but for now i'm going to get out of here for the day have a great week a great weekend and we'll talk to you later